The British referendum on staying or leaving the European Union has finally arrived, with votes being finalised as we record this update. But the latest polling suggests a likely surprise win for Brexit over Bremain, which is expected to add significant volatility and uncertainty to the markets. The main concerns centre on political, social and economic consequences and risks, both in the UK and potentially for the EU, which while perhaps being slightly overstated, is more than enough to remove confidence and stability to stock markets and currency markets. The chart shows Great British Pound volatility prices spiking higher to near GFC levels ahead of the referendum, as well as the first results being announced, this volatility continuing. And this may take some time to improve in lieu of the vote. The other offshore focal points are mainly China and the United States. And a recent speech by RBA Assistant Governor Chris Kent talked about the dependency Australia has on China and, of course, the opportunities there, but balanced by the risks of an over-reliance on China. The speech highlighted some of the challenges Chinese authorities have faced in stimulating growth for short-term goals, as opposed to addressing debt levels in banks, households and businesses. With total debt to GDP over 250%, this is below many advanced economies, but it is the rate of accumulation of debt that is the issue rather than the absolute level. Back home, the focus has been on our Reserve Bank rather than the Northern Hemisphere, with the latest RBA board minutes suggesting an August rate cut is still on the table, but by no means a done deal. There's a lot to play out between now and then, including a federal election and plenty of data to come around inflation, the jobs market and business confidence. The level of the Aussie dollar remains crucial in all of this. Its reaction to the UK vote is still washing through. But when thinking about our reliance on Chinese demand via iron ore and coal exports, we are therefore exposed to the commodity prices. So the Aussie dollar will need to offset any falls in commodity export values, which are principally denominated in US dollars. In other words, if Chinese demand falls, we will need a sharp fall in the Aussie dollar. But if that demand continues, we can afford a higher A dollar, which, given where the US economy is trending, is quite plausible. Until next week, that's the market update from Bendigo Bank.